Welcome all. Thank you for joining Around Town with Rotary. This is a monthly show to educate you on all the great things that the Beverly Rotary Club does for our community and in particular for those in need. I am Al Temkin. I serve as co-host along with my, my partner in crime here, Mike Harrington. Mike, you have a guest you want to introduce? Well, I certainly do, Al. Thank you so much. Great to see you here today. Hey, everybody at home. Uh, nice to be here with everybody. Uh, our guest here today is Sarah Le McBurney Laporto. And uh, Sarah is uh, a real estate broker here locally. She's also the director of operations at Her Herrick Lutz Realty Partners. So Sarah, welcome to the show here today. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, hey, we're gonna cover a lot of territory here, Sarah, in this half hour show. Um, but you know, before we um, get into your career in Rotary, let's talk a little bit about things at home. I know you have a husband and a beautiful little girl at home. You wanna tell us everybody at home about them? Sure. Um, my husband, Tim Laporto, he's actually grew up in Beverly. He's, he's a local plumber and um, we live in Danvers and my daughter Celia just turned nine years old and she is in the third grade and very active. So driving around a lot. <laughs> Very good. They keep you busy, don't they, Sarah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bless you up. Bless you up. Now, Sarah, where did you grow up? I know you're, you're working here in the North Shore, but where did you grow up? Yeah, I actually grew up in uh, Newburyport, so not too far from here. Okay. And what about schooling? What types of, uh, what types of things did you study? Where did you go to school? So I, um, I graduated New Report High School, and then I actually moved to this area um, to attend Salem State. So I am a 2002 Salem State, before it was a university, grad, and um, also a graduate of uh, Mass School of Law. Oh, terrific. Interesting. You learn something new about somebody you've known for years every day. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. It, it just takes a TV show out. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's the case, yeah. So why don't you take us then, Sarah, from, so you, you graduated from the law school, you graduated from Salem State. Um, what, what was the next point? So I'm actually going to back up because my story is not the typical story. Um, well, not for me anyway. I actually started um, selling real estate when I was a sophomore at Salem State. Wow. And so, yeah, I, um, you know, I was a, a business major at Salem State. Real estate literally fell into my lap. I bought a condo while at Salem State, and um, ultimately it just turned me into the real estate business. And, uh, you know, in the course of, of selling real estate, I decided, oh, I'll be a real estate lawyer and put myself through law school. Um, clearly, I did not shift and become a real estate lawyer, but, um, but it was a great um, addition to my learning and my resume in the real estate world. That's awesome. It's it, that's again. It's just so funny. You learn. I think I've known you from Mike and I. Probably have known you for it's got to be a fifteen years or something, and I uh, never knew that. So thank you for sharing that. So you know what? Let's let's kind of get to the to where we are now. What is it specifically that you're doing now, um, including the things that might be a little bit different from where you started as a real estate agent? Sure. So. Um... Being that I was a sophomore at Salem State when I got my start, um, I've now been doing this for 20 years. I got my start. Ah, can you believe that? I was only 12. I was only 12. Um, <laughs> so I've been in real estate for 20 years. Um, I am still currently working with clients, um, helping them you know, navigate buying and selling and investing. Um, I also, as director of operations for the small team that we have here, I assist the other agents with their clients and with their transactions. Um, so helping develop systems, marketing, and just overall uh, transaction management. Wow. How, how big is the group that you're working with there? We are a group of 10, um, which is amazing. Yeah, we lost you there for a second. I know. So you, I don't know what yeah. happened. I'm sorry. So you, but you're working with a group of 10 people, you said, huh? Yes. Yes. Good for you. Good for you. And good for them. That's awesome. Good. Now, Sarah, what percentage of your time are you working on operation stuff versus a real estate project? Is it about half and half or how do you, how do you, uh, you know, how do you budget your time? Sure. So, um, you know, 
we're actually in the office. We have enough space to be able to be working out of the office. So I'm really here on a routine schedule, Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five ish. Um, a lot of real estate is conducted outside of the nine to five, sometimes within, but a lot of times appointments and showings are outside of business hours to accommodate folks' schedules and weekends as well. So um, I would say that it's probably a solid 50 50. It, you know, it all, it's all meshed together, whether I'm, you know, assisting like my own clients through their process or helping someone else uh, through their, you know, their client's process. It's a, it's a lot the same. Great. Well, hey, the real estate market notoriously ebbs and flows back and forth. We're going through a really interesting time right now. Um, can you tell everybody at home a little bit about the market, the supply and demand and kind of what you see, you know, from where you sit as a realtor? Yes. Yeah. So supply and demand is very interesting. Um, we have been in a serious lack of inventory since 2012. And that compounds year over year. So as you can imagine, eight years into a deficit of available housing, um, demand is very, very high and supply continues to be low. So that has um, driven pricing higher. Well, sure. I mean, some of that is absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, looking at some of the properties, there's a house that sold around where I am uh, recently, and it it was a house that the woman had lived in for 60 years, and the last time that house was updated was 60 years ago. I mean, it was an absolute mess, water in the basement, the whole thing. That house went for $700,000. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's almost not even just uh, supply and demand. We've gotten to the level of there is a desperation factor. And I say that with like the utmost respect, but folks who have potentially lost out on house after house after house, there comes a point where they're, they take action to ensure that they get that next available property. And people really, you know, they, they go for location, which has always been the case. Um, but it, it's, it's hard to find a house and to be able to purchase it. So we are seeing, you know, drastic spikes in pricing. It's a great time to be a seller if, if you have somewhere to go. Right, exactly. Yeah, because if you got to buy something in the area, you get the same problem. Yeah. So you're finding a lot of bidding wars of people kind of kind of fighting back and forth with numbers and things? Yes. Yes, um, we are seeing what almost feels as though uh, a house will be listed at a particular price and due to demand and bidding, it will almost bid up into an entirely different price bracket, like a house listed for 600,000 and ultimately sells for 700,000 based on multiple bids. That's crazy. It's it can be. <laughs> is this is this dynamic unique to the New England area or is it like that all over the country? It can happen all over the country. Um, I find Massachusetts to be a really unique case because um, it's Massachusetts. They're not making any more land. You guys know that. I mean, we do have some development, um, but it, it isn't like where you can go in other parts of the country and have these, you know, vast acres where they can you know, meet the demand by building the supply. We just don't have that luxury. And, and in Massachusetts, it's a, it's a shortage across all levels of housing, starting with affordable housing all the way up through even, um, you know, the much higher price points. So it's not unique to Massachusetts, but we are sort of a perfect storm for the bidding situation, you know, given that there isn't a ton of uh, new development. I see. Hey, obviously, here we are still sitting in the throes of COVID. Um, uh, it's been such a challenging time for so many businesses, Sarah. How has COVID affected your business and, um, you know, your ability to do what you do or other people in your in your space? Sure. So, um, you know, when we sort of went into the stay at home orders, it was a little hairy and scary. <laughs> Um, to start. And then real estate was uh, deemed essential, which if you think about it, you know, housing and where people are going to live is kind of an essential thing. Um, 
and real estate really has been making a transition toward um, a lot of stuff being done online, electronically, virtually, and that came, um, that, that helped really in the beginning. So really what COVID um, has affected now is clearly like anything, like going to the grocery store, you know, wearing PPE, limiting, you know, like open houses, we stagger entry into an open house so that people are safely distancing from one another. Um, we also can supplement with like virtual tours of the property. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, you take that lack of supply and the large demand and it's exacerbated by COVID and hear me out on this. Um, People being quarantined or stay at home order in, in their home and they decide no more. And so clearly they want to find, you know, a new property. Right. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, you know what, if, if you guys don't mind at this point, I'm going to take a very quick break and uh, ask all of you to please watch this very short video. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organization. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They help buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. Welcome back, everybody. Um, Sarah, let's get into the next uh, subject matter, which is most important, uh, not most, but certainly is important to the three of us. Let's talk about your introduction to Rotary. Yes. So I actually, um, through my business partner currently, um, Paul Herrick, I had been introduced to the Salem Rotary Club by going to their events with him and helping them with some of their service projects. And I loved it. And I decided I wanted my own turn at Rotary. And as luck would have it, um, Steve Archer, who was actually a longtime member of the Beverly Rotary Club and also you know, works at Keller Williams with us, um, he was retiring from the club. And so between Steve and um, Bill Howard, who was you know, president of Beverly Bank at the time, they uh, brought me in and that sort of started my um, career, if you will, with Beverly Rotary Club. Terrific, and we're so lucky to have you. Now please tell our very vast audience, you know, keep in mind you're talking to millions of people right now, but um, what are some of the activities that you have found uh, you know, you enjoy the most with the club? What are some of the things you're doing? Sure. Um, it's actually really hard to determine. Like, I love all of it, you know, starting with uh, the weekly lunches and the camaraderie and being with everyone, you know, from all over the community. Yep. Um, but in particular, I really love our service projects, you know, um, ringing the bell with uh, for the Salvation Army at Christmas time, um, you know, food projects with uh, Beverly Bootstraps, um, you know, for a while we had done the mobile truck, um, and serving like the elderly, their food, I, you know, there's so many things. I really love, um, the service projects and the, and the fundraisers that we do. It's just all great stuff. That's awesome. Well, Sarah, you're a past president of Rotary. So thanks for your service. Maybe you can tell everybody home a little bit about how you became president and maybe reflecting back on your year. What were some of the things about your year that were really interesting or noteworthy? Sure. So, um, so I had joined the club in 2008 and I want to say within the first couple of years, they had grabbed me for the board 
And I felt very honored. Um, so it was, you know, during that time on the board and growing within the club that I guess someone had said, get her before she has kids. <laughs> and then and then I had my daughter. And then they said, get her before her kid gets old enough to have too many activities. So I think, you know, I think Celia was like three years old when I was president. Um, but so, you know, being on the board was great. My year as president, it, it went by so fast. It was sort of a blur. Um, it's really nice, you know, within our club, and I found this for me in my year, is that we continued on the traditions that the Rotarians that had come before me, you know, had had built, um, and also, too, able to put my own spin on it. So I had actually... Um, sort of game planned and partnered with the president before me and after me where we could have projects that would benefit, um, you know, multiple years in a row. So we had worked with, um, you know, Mayor Mike Cahill on um, some, some projects and planning for children. Um, it just, yeah, it was just such an amazing year and just really, really amazing to see how much as a club we do you know, being in the role as president and, you know, things would be happening. I didn't even know they were going on and like behind the scenes, everybody's playing their role and, you know, making a huge impact in the community. So it was an awesome year for me. Awesome year for us also. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's a big commitment of time. It's, it's manageable though, honestly, you know, with the amount that everyone else within the club does and the longevity and, you know, the history that we have, like we're, we're a well-oiled machine, thankfully. Um, it could get a little overwhelming, but it was manageable. Well, again, you did a wonderful job. We had a great year. Now, um, it, so as we know, our club is, is uh, just about to become 100 years old. Now, Sarah, you were, tell me if I'm right on this, I'm going to say the third woman president of our club? Yes, yes, third female president of Beverly Rotary. And imagine that there was a time when women weren't even allowed in the club. Exactly right, yeah, yeah. Well, the good news is that's no longer true, but but um, yeah, you did, a, you did a wonderful job. But let's get back to your career a little bit. What are, what are some of the things that, um, that you're doing to enhance your business, to, to find new opportunities, to kind of get out there? I mean, you have business like the ones that Mike and I are in. Uh, it's a very competitive business. How, how, what are some of the things that you do on a daily basis to try to find new opportunities? Sure. So I would say that, uh, and this has been, you know, things were a little different probably in my first year, second year in, in the business. Um, but just putting myself in front of people, um, going out on a limb for people, it's really you guys, you can appreciate this. It's a lot like Rotary. It's all about the relationships and, um, you know, how I work with clients and how I treat my clients and how I stay in touch with my clients. They become like family, like friends. And, um, and I've been really, really fortunate in that um, I've developed those relationships. And so people feel comfortable to um, recommend friends and family to me and I'm, I'm just you know I, I try to put service above self and uh that can come in handy greatly in in business as well well quite frankly being on the street as much as i am the reputation you've built is phenomenal so it's it's kind of easy to see why people would recommend and refer somebody to you because you do the right thing and people know that and that's the word that's on the street and that's all people ask for treat me well and just do the right thing by me and i'm good to go so so good for you um what would you say if you if you um, had to pick, I don't know, the top three things or something that are keys to your success in this industry, in this business, what would you say they are? Top three things. Um, again, service, for sure. Um, especially, you know, like real estate agents can get a bad rap, like car salesmen, unfortunately. It's true. So um, number one, you know, putting your clients first, absolutely first and foremost, putting clients first. Um, always be willing to learn. That's number two. Um, you know, having gone through undergrad, law school, extensive amounts of time of continuing education credits and, you know, courses to enhance like knowledge within the industry. It's just, even though it's a lot the same, real estate is constantly changing. So just always being open-minded, willing to learn. And, you know, sometimes it's stuff that's non-real estate related that will help you in your business. So that would be number two. 
And um, number three, just being persistent, you know, like everybody has their season. It isn't always easy, but so long as you do the basic daily activities um, consistently and showing up for yourself in your business, um, I'd say those are the, the top three keys. Well, again, it certainly has worked for you quite well. Could you, could you name a couple of people that you've mentored and are now doing well in the, in the, uh, in the business? Yeah. I mean, I've mentored with a lot of different, um, agents. Um, oh, geez. I'm trying to think like people in our community, um, Tara Whalen from Rotary mentored with me for a little bit. She is doing so phenomenal. She did not need to be mentored for long. Um, just there's so many people that I've mentored and like, I just, I always make myself available to people, even current day. Um, anytime if they have a real estate related question, whether they're a real estate agent themselves or, or otherwise. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really nice to be able to turn around and share what I've learned over 20 years with other people. Get a chance to help so many other people, right? Good for yeah. you. Good for you. That's great. Good job. Um, yeah, state association. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so actually here in Beverly, we have the North Shore Association of Realtors, which is our um, local real estate board. And what a lot of people don't realize is that it is the associations, National Massachusetts Association and the local real estate boards that um, govern our code of ethics. So only those agents that are a member of, a, of an association become a member of the National Association of Realtors. And we have a heightened level of professionalism, a code of ethics that we live by. So I've been very involved with our local association over the years, maybe less so right now, but I've worked on a ton of boards uh, for them. I am their current ombudsman. So if there are um, sort of like grievances amongst agents, I work with them to help them facilitate the best um, resolve of the issue and thankfully there haven't been a lot of those lately either um but it's just it's an awesome organization they do a lot within the community as well and um yeah That's great awesome. any other types of volunteering you do or uh, or activities or organizations you're involved in sure i mean so rotary is you know the largest part um I've been, and, and also too through, through the North Shore Association of Realtors, I've been um, in the past, in the recent past, you know, very involved with the Greater Beverly Chamber. Um, any, you know, anytime there are service projects that I'm able to contribute to, I do, you know, I do try to do them. Um, we've done some like giving projects here just within our own little office. And Keller Williams also has service projects I've done. And recently, with our own Brian Murphy, um, he's gotten me involved with St. Vincent de Paul here in Beverly. And I am absolutely loving that, the community outreach. And um, it just like, it's amazing to learn what different organizations do for people. And, and that's been really eye-opening and rewarding thus far to help him with uh, all that they have going on. And they're certainly lucky to have you. That's, that's awesome, that's terrific. Um, in closing, Sarah, my, I have uh, two things to add. First of all, um, if somebody watching this did have a real estate question or uh, I was looking for somebody to help them buy or sell something, what's the easiest and best way for them to get in contact with you? Sure. So easiest and best way is to call or text me. And that's 978-337-9955. You can also just Google my name, Sarah McBurney Laporto, and find, I have a YouTube channel, um, sarahwillsellyourhome.com is my website. sarahwillsellyourhome.com. That's cool. <laughs> that is really cool. Good, good, good. So um, I think we're gonna, uh, gonna probably wrap this up, Mike, would you say? Joining us here today, uh, you have such a, you've done such a great job here locally with real estate. And I would certainly urge anybody watching this show, if you have any real estate questions, uh, you know, Sarah is a great go-to person on that subject. But hey, here we are in the holiday season. I, I certainly wish you and Tim and Celia uh, a great holiday season. And obviously the same to you, Al, and your family and, and everybody at home. Uh, 
stay safe, stay well, and uh, we'll see you back here soon again on Around Town with Rotary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.